welcome to Pregnant Possibilities. And I just want to share with you, this is Dr. Deborah Shapiro, and she is an amazing OBGYN. She's had, oh my God, like a zillion years of experience as an OBGYN. She has been helping women throughout for over 25 years. So I'm so excited to be here with you, Deborah. I'm always excited to be with you because you add so much with your knowledge of education and chemistry and toxins and and high tech stuff. <laughs> like <this. laughs> if you have questions, you can post below and I'm going to be trying to watch the feed. I don't know always if I see them or not, but because we've always had issues with that, but you can post in the below and we are going live every week this time. We want you to help get your body pregnant ready. So we have the top three factors that are going to help you to get your body pregnant ready. And you can get those for free. You can go to pregnantready.com or pregnantready.net. Either one of those will work. And we're going to give away that to you because we want to help women. That's our goal. We want to help women to get their bodies pregnant ready. So hopefully, Deborah, if you want to, you ready to dive in now to some Absolutely. questions? Absolutely. All right. So so first question up on deck is, does high, high blood pressure drugs reduce fertility in a woman? Okay, these are all, we all had, we had great questions come in and this is an excellent question. Because interesting how in our society, it's almost a given that as you get older, your blood pressure is gonna go up, right? We, always, we almost just think it's, just, it's, it's something that happens with aging and I'm seeing younger and younger women with high blood pressure. In fact, the, um, the Institute of Medicine or whether it's oh, the American Cardiology Association, they've, um, they've actually lowered what they consider hypertension. Uh, so now more and more women and men are going to be considered hypertensive and then of course be offered medication. So we're gonna see more, and more of this. But I think the issue, and it's different for men and for women, but the issue isn't completely about the high blood pressure drugs but it might be about the underlying conditions that are leading to the high blood pressure. For example, being overweight and obese, and also having atherosclerosis, having, I mean, the whole reason that we have higher blood pressure, we have to, the, the heart has to pump harder, is because the vessels have been narrowed by atherosclerotic plaque of cholesterol and lipids, and they're inflammatory. So, so those issues, atherosclerosis and obesity are definitely going to be affecting fertility in women as in men. But what's interesting about high blood pressure for men is because it is a sign of cardiovascular disease and it affects the small vessels in the penis, you are definitely going to see something called erectile dysfunction in men. And they actually consider erectile dysfunction in men to be sort of the canary in the coal mine for cardiovascular disease. And it can precede a heart attack by a few years, like three to five years. So it's, it's very important that if you, if you have a spouse who has erectile dysfunction, that he be seen by a cardiologist right away for that to be looked at and to make sure that he doesn't have, the can, you know, it can be psychogenic, but it can also be physiologic because of a small vessel disease. There, for high blood pressure medications in men, definitely they also affect the sperm. So the, the, both the amount and the quality. The beta blockers, which are safe in women, but beta blockers like labetalol, beta blockers are, 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 not, are not good for sperm for men and also those ACE inhibitors, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhib inhibitors are not safe. And calcium channel blockers like nifedipine, which we also are, is uh, safer in women, that might be a little bit better for men. So if, if you have a spouse who has, who has high blood pressure and it can't be treated with diet and lifestyle changes, which we would always recommend first, because that would be safer and better all around because it would treat the underlying conditions, not just the numbers, right? Then, but if it's important to get those numbers down, then I would go with the calcium channel blocker because I think that would be less damaging to the sperm than the ACE inhibitors or the, or the beta blockers. Now for, for women, if you have hypertension, again, I would focus on the underlying conditions because they will definitely affect fertility. We need to reduce the amount of fat that you're carrying. 
because that will upset your ability to ovulate and your um, also affect also the uh, the health of the baby by having too much adipose tissue. First, I would try to get your blood pressure down with diet and lifestyle changes and exercise. And if your blood pressure is still high, or if you have already been diagnosed with high blood pressure and you want to get pregnant and you're on an ACE inhibitor, an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, or one of those classes, you need to talk to your doctor first about switching to one that is safer. So there are definitely safer medications to be on in pregnancy. And you don't want to be on an ACE inhibitor because it will, it, it is associated with, with birth defects in the fetus. So you want to switch ahead of time. If you need to be on medications, you want to switch to a beta blocker. Um, and what we're going to be talking about in the pregnancy advantage is really managing, getting your blood pressure down with dietary changes, because we know that meat increases blood pressure and animal products increase blood pressure. Being obese increases blood pressure. And when you look at the, uh, you know, a study like the Adventist Health Study 2, where they looked at people with all different types of diets, the only people that had a normal BMI less than 25 were the vegans. Every, even, even the pescatarians, even the flexitarians, and the, um, they, they all had higher BMI. So if you want to have a normal BMI and the optimal BMI for getting pregnant is about 22. So 20 to 24, you really want to be in that very normal range. So, and, and one more thing about this idea that just getting older is going to cause your blood pressure to go up. We know it isn't true because they've been studies. If you look back at the sort of the China, the China project and the China study, we've looked at people with more traditional diets in, in rural China. And even at, even at 70 and 80 years old, their blood pressures were still low, 110 over 70. So that's what you're shooting for. And I know it's just not seen here. I talked to patients. I remember talking even to patients who were physicians and as they got to be about 45 or 50, their blood pressure were up and they were immediately put on medications. And when I talked to them, I said, well, why don't you just try a plant-based diet? And they just said, no, it's easier just to take the medication. And it's very sad, very, very sad because, the un because you're not really treating the underlying conditions that will still lead to trouble down the road. Obesity is going to lead to diabetes and heart disease is going to, and, and, and atherosclerotic plaque is going to lead to a heart attack and a stroke. And there's, you know, there's no way out. You can't just take a pill and expect, you know, sort of get a free ride. Ooh, I feel like I'm on a soapbox. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but you're on a roll because I, you know, hundred percent. I mean, you know, on, on the medications, anytime your body gets a medication, you know, anytime you get anything you put in or on your body, your body has to deal with. Yeah. And so if we can get away from those medications, I think that, can help on so many different levels, you know, and that's one of the Absolutely. things that we talk Absolutely. about in our program is how to do this and reverse it without dealing with, with medications. Right. For example, you know, the, the medications that we give people to keep their blood pressure down, that increases your risk of, of a heart attack, of, of, car, of, um, of cardiovascular disease, of, of MI. So yes, there's no, there's no, I, I shouldn't say there's no free ride because eating this way is so pleasurable yes. on so many levels. You know, you're doing it for the environment. You're doing it for the animals. I mean, it just makes sense in your soul to be eating this way. And I know at first when you hear about it, it's like, ah, it's too extreme. I can't do it. You guys are nuts. But, but, but this is what the pregnancy advantage is about because we're going to be teaching you ways to make amazing food that's going to taste so good and it's going to be so nourishing and you're going to have all the background information so you're going to know how you're going to be getting your body full of micronutrients and macronutrients that are going to support a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby and be ready for when you're breastfeeding too so i mean it really is it's something that's going to carry you through for months and months and months and even years it's true it's true well next good job there deborah Always good. All right. Next question that we got from one of our viewers, we had people writing in asking us the questions ahead of time. So do I need to take prenatal vitamins if I plan to become pregnant, even if I'm vegan? Great question. Great question. So yeah. early studies showed that even when we people were on a diet that was rich in folate from greens and beans, which is a micronutrient, it's a B vitamin, they still did better and had lower risks of neural tube defects, that is problems with the brain and spinal cord, when they were given extra folic acid ahead of time, preconceptually. And so it is recommended by just about 
everybody all around the world that if women are trying to get pregnant and if, and you know, the problem is that women don't often know when they're going to be pregnant. So you might miss those first few weeks that are so cru so critical for the formation of the brain and spinal cord. They recommend that every woman takes 400 micrograms of folic acid. And that isn't instead of, it doesn't mean you don't have to eat your beans and greens. So that's the other thing I want to tell you about these, these vitamins. I mean, they're not, they're never really giving you, well, the, some of them might have enough of uh, completely enough of everything. Like you can get a prenatal vitamin that has 150 micrograms of iodine. And that's what you need. Uh, you need a little bit more when you're pregnant. It goes up to 220 milligrams and then 290 when you're breastfeeding. And you'll find when you look at these prenatal vitamins, they have 150. So you're still going to need more. And you know the, the, the high for iodine is qu quite a bit higher than that. So you don't have to really worry about overdosing unless you're really eating a lot of, um, of, of certain kinds of seaweed that might have too much. But it's just a little extra. And there are definitely some nutrients of concern that that you want to have a little extra of, and I'll go through all of these. Now, the, um, the issue with spina bifida is fascinating because, because we're, already, we're already seeing with this low carb craze, you know, the, the keto oh, diet and that the paleo makes me diet. crazy. But yeah. we are already, there's data now, you can look it up, but there is data that's showing a 30% increase in neural tube defects, even things like anencephaly, like no brain in the fetus when women are on these diets because they are oh. not getting the legumes and the greens that they need. Wow. So it's really, it's really frightening. The, the other thing, oh, there's so many aspects to this, but when you're on a vegan diet, a vegan diet just means that you're not eating any animal products. It doesn't necessarily mean the optimally, optimal nutrition diet, optimally um, uh, fortified kind of diet for a pregnancy. It's just a diet that avoids, and being vegan also is more than just a diet, right? It's a whole lifestyle. And I'm, absolutely all for that, but not wearing leather and feathers and, you know, being respectful of the earth. But, but in terms of what you eat, it has to be a little bit more than that. You know, something Dr. Furman talks about a nutritarian diet and Dr. Greger has his daily dozen where he really has all these boxes, little boxes. So you can ch check off different things. Cause I've talked to lots of people who are, you know, vegan, but then you ask them, well, how often are you eating a cruciferous vegetable to get your sulforaphane, which is an amazingly important nutrient and antioxidant that, that does, that, um, causes your, your liver, your phase two, phase two enzymes in your liver to detoxify, which is what your liver is supposed to do. But they're not eating broccoli and, and kale. You know, they're, they might be eating veggie burgers and, you know, French fries that aren't cooked in chicken fat, but they're still not eating an optimal diet. So, so the other part of this is when you're pregnant, when you first get pregnant, you're not going to be that hungry. You're really not, and you're, you might not be able to eat very much at all. It's true that when you're eating a plant-based diet, you will have less morning sickness than if you're eating a meat-heavy diet, uh, an animal-based diet, but still, you probably in the first trimester, in that very crucial few weeks, you may not be getting enough, and so we really want you to top off all these micronutrients, and so I think a multivitamin is, is very important, and there are certain, certain vitamins that all vegans need to take no matter what. Okay, and those are B12, D, and a separate DHA and EPA or a DHA supplement. So with B12, you, you can't mess around with B12. It's so important for your nervous system. And if you get deficient in B12, the results can be, the, the results can be something that cannot be fixed. It's, uh, it's permanent. They can be permanent. So there, there's no reason to be B12 deficient. Uh, you can use B12 fortified foods. There's plant milk that's fortified with B12. That's fine. That could be fine if you really pay attention to it and you're having it all, you know, regularly. But you need to get either, you only need 2.4 micrograms a day, and I think it's 2.6 when you're pregnant, but, and 2 .8, maybe 2.8 later, but when you're breastfeeding. But we don't absorb all of it. If you look at those prenatal vitamins, they have a little bit. They'll say, I have 100%, right? They'll say they have 2.4 micrograms. And then they'll say they have 100% of what you need. But you don't absorb it all that well. And if you have a vitamin that has copper in it, copper makes it so that the B12 is not accessible in your body. It's not going to be useful. It turns it into a B12 analog. Oh, who knew that? Dr. Gregor knew that. I learned it from him. So some of these vitamins might have copper. So you don't want to get copper and you want to take your B12 separately on an empty stomach. So it's fine if, you're, if, you're, if your prenatal vitamins have a little bit of B12, the 2.4 micrograms, that's fine, but you still need, I would take, you know, something like 2,000 micrograms 
a week. And cyanocobalamin is preferred unless you have kidney, unless you have kidney disease or you smoke because the this, this cyanocobalamin can be turned into both active forms, the adenosyl cobalamin and the methylcobalamin forms, of the active forms of B12. So that's why it's a little bit better than the methyl, but you can use the methyl also, but it cannot be turned into the other active form, the adenosyl cobalamin. So it would be great to have 2,000 micrograms a week as a sublingual, like a spray or a lozenge that you melt under your tongue and then you're covered. So either 1,000 micrograms a couple times a week or 2,000 a week, or maybe even 50 a day, if you can find a vitamin that has 50 a day. But I, I, I'm a little worried about it. I think it should be taken on an empty stomach to, get, to really absorb it. So that's that. And then vitamin D. If you can be out in the sunshine yeah. for about 20 minutes, every day and get most of your body in the sun, that's wonderful. You really wanna get your level of 25 hydroxy D up. And we say that less than 20 is deficient and between 20 and 30 is, is um, insufficient and over 30 is normal, but we really wanna shoot maybe a little higher, like to 40, 50, 60 range. It doesn't have to be up above 80, but it maybe should be a little bit higher than even the 30. So if you get that checked and you're low, you can get, you get the sunshine. You could also take a vegan D3 supplement and most people need about 2,000 IU a day, international units a day of vitamin D3. And the last is the extra DHA. Now, so I think we had, a, we had a question later on, and so I can sort of wait if you're going to stay online uh, to hear about more about the omega-3 fatty acids, but let's just, just jump into the, to, to the chase. Dr. Greger does recommend, and, we, and for a number of reasons, I would also agree that we should have a little extra preformed DHA to help with the baby's brain, not only, it's not, it may not be so important actually during the pregnancy, but it's important to top up your levels so that when you're breastfeeding and you're giving the baby the breast milk, then your breast milk is high in omega-3 fatty acids so that baby's brain can continue to develop well. So it is recommended now that everyone gets about 250 to 300 milligrams of a preformed microalgae-based DHA. Don't get fish oil. Our, we're living sort of in this toxic soup now. And the oceans are really polluted. They've got all kinds of persistent organic pollutants in them. They've got I mean, your fish are polluted with dioxins and PCBs. And it's really not safe to take fish from the ocean where there's more plastic practically than ocean. Than, than, um, than and fish. you can't filter that out. No, no, you can't filter these chemicals out. I mean, they say they test them, but I just, I think it's better not to deplete, the, can you imagine how many fish you'd have to drag out of the ocean to, to, just to distill them down to their oil and fill the shelves with all that fish oil? I mean, for a vegan, I mean, that's really it's very distasteful. So the, um, the, the microalgae-based DHA is safe. It's, the algae is grown sterilely. It's not contaminated with PCBs, with, with uh, pollutants and, and all kinds of xeno, xenoestrogens, which can affect fertility in both male and female. So that's what I would use. And you just get a preformed DHA. And that would be great. So, you know, I'm actually, gonna... the, the prescription, the prescription prenatals that I used to give up in my office when I was in private practice, they a lot of the prescription prenatals because they know now that this is helpful. They would actually have a separate capsule of microalgae-based DHA. Awesome. I'm just going to jump in on the the on the metals because I just posted today in the Pregnancy Advantage on the Facebook page. A, video that I did with Dr. Neil Barnard, and we talk about the metals and how toxic many of them can be, even though they're micronutrients and they're, they're nutrients that, yes, we need, but micro means small, okay? Like really ridiculously small amounts of these micronutrients. And if you're getting too much of it, a lot of these are stored in your body fat. And then that one of the things that happens is it goes over to the baby, you know, as you're breastfeeding, as, you know, these, these transfer right over to your child or as you're developing the child, all the toxins that you have in your body, your body, the baby's gonna be exposed to. So do check that video out with Dr. Neil Barnard. We talk about toxins and that helps down the road, uh, not getting these toxins in. I mean, I know we're focusing on pregnancy, but it helps for down the road for Alzheimer's, dementia. You know, that was the whole point of this. This came, the, the conversation we came from his book called Power Food for the Brain. So, but it's not just for the brain, it's for the whole body and developing a new baby. So I just want to say, when you were mentioning about heavy metals, that one of the first things that happened to me that made me think about 
being plant-based was that a patient came to me who, was pre who had miscarried and was found to be uh, poisoned by mercury. Her mercury level was extremely high and I took care of her. And it made me think about my own diet and how much fish I was eating at that time because I was sort of moving away from meat and eating more fish. And my mercury level was also very high. It was up to 14. It took me months to get it down because the half-life is about 100 days. So that got me thinking more about what we're eating. And yeah. I, I still think I'm probably the only OBGYN in this area, and I don't know where else in the country, but who measures, if people tell me that they're eating fish more than, more than just a couple times a week, I would definitely measure a mercury level because mercury stays in your body. It has to be excreted in the stool. And those fetuses inside of you, they cannot excrete. They don't excrete this stuff until they pass meconium. So that means that their body is seeing your highest level, even though you, you stop when you find out about it, and your level goes down if we measure it, but the baby sees that highest level the entire pregnancy, and it is a neurotoxin, so it yeah. is definitely affecting the baby's brain. A few more, uh, there were a few other nutrients of concern, and I just I didn't want you to think it was only B12D and omega threes that we're worried about, but we talk about them in detail in the pregnancy advantage right. about how to be the healthiest plant based eater around and how to get all of your micronutrients covered, including calcium and iron and protein and iodine and choline and and protein and zinc. I mentioned protein twice. It's because you're actually in your second trimester, your protein requirement does go up. So, I mean, we don't have to think about that. You really, you need to be a good example. What we don't want is people going, having babies that are, you know, that are underweight and not healthy and having issues that the pediatrician is going to pick up on that. Oh, and you were vegan and we'll get a very bad rep. <laughs> so, we know that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has come out with a policy statement saying that plant based diets vegetarian and vegan diets, if they're well-planned, are completely healthy for all stages of life, including pregnancy and infancy and all stages of life into, um, until older age, including also athletes. So, but we, have, but we have to make sure we do it carefully. Well, Deborah, before we jump into another question or discuss, what made you, I know what my reasons are, but what made you want to start the Pregnancy Advantage? I read an article in a, in a journal called, it was an OBGYN, OBGYN journal that came to me and it was, it was, the title was Obesity and the Fetal Brain, Maternal Obesity and the Fetal Brain. And it, back, it was back in 2016, which was about the same time that um, the, that the Permanente Journal came out with its policy statement about plant-based nutrition and that Kaiser Permanente should be telling all of their, their doctors and should be telling all of their patients about plant-based nutrition. So this was sort of, and I was already, and I was already plant-based and vegan and sort of learning and studying about this. But what I read really stuck with me. And it was horrifying that by, by being obese, and at the same time I was seeing more of my patients being heavier and heavier and I was unable to control their weight gain. And I, and I wasn't able to really get them to be plant-based during their pregnancy. And so, so, you know, the babies are fine, but there was definitely more hypertension in pregnancy, more preeclampsia, more diabetes, more difficult to control diabetes, more need for earlier intervention and, 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 in, and induction of labor and then C-sections and hemorrhages and just more of everything and more complications. And then going back and looking at this article and seeing that there's data that when women are carrying more weight on them, that this is toxic to the baby's brain and, and, and their body in general. And it locks off IQ points and causes um, you know, mental illness and ADHD and autism spectrum disorders in the child. And, and I, that was probably the, the beginning for me. And then when I, met, when I met you and we just sort of had this meeting of the minds that you know, you're seeing the children, I mean, you could talk about your part of it and, and why you wanted to do this. But um, I, I feel be, between that and then also learning about the toxins in our environment, the endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, oh right? The, the heavy They're metals. So the, right, the phthalates and parabens and, and the... Um, and, the, and the, those also knock IQ points off of babies. So then you don't even know what it, if you think about being obese and eating poorly and being exposed to these endocrine disrupting chemicals, and they're both affecting the IQ of your fetus. You just think, you know, we've been in this experiment for the last 70 years since we started using plastics and all of this. And, and people have, you know, I don't really know if, if, if IQs, I don't know if anyone's been looking at this, but, you know, are people, are we sort of 
dumbing down. But we can't afford to be doing that. We can't afford to be doing this because the problems that are going to be facing the next generation and the next the generation after that are so monumental and they are they are so crucial, so critical to right. this to the the whole race of, of all living things, of all the races continuing and all living things continuing on this planet, that we need to be the smartest and the healthiest we can be. We can't be a race of, of sick humans. Oh my God, you, you, you nailed it. You, you hit it on the head. And that's one of the things that I'm starting to see a lot in the classroom. I mean, I just stepped out of the classroom after 35 years as a teacher. And I primarily taught chemistry, environmental science, biology. So I I have seen, I don't teach the way I did 35 years ago because the kids can't handle it. And I've been looking for what is it that's causing such an increase of ADD or ADHD or cognitive development or being able to process and apply and focus. And I I've come down to it's the food and the toxins that we're being exposed to. I mean, there's been over 10,000 chemicals that have been introduced into our ecosystem since post-World War II. And we're like walking chemistry experiments. And this just goes back to my chemistry. You know, there's two types of chemicals, fat-soluble, water-soluble. If it's water-soluble, you're peeing it out. If it's fat-soluble, hey, it's going right into your fat cells. And so as you start to eliminate these things and, and start to burn fat, then you are going to be burning these toxins. But also, too, you're going to be transferring over a lot of this to your baby. And so I think this is one of the reasons why I am just so motivated. And I know, you know, you as well from the, you know, as you're catching them coming out of the chute. I mean, and, and, you know, but I see, saw them in the classroom and saw that this is just absolutely, uh, we've got, we have to do this. And this is why we created this program. So for anybody who's listening out there, we have created a document. You get free, the top three things that we feel that you need to focus on to get your body what we call pregnant ready. And you can find that at pregnantready.net or pregnantready.com. Either one of those, you'll, you'll get access to it. So we want to give that away as a free gift. So I think, Deborah, we have time for one more question that we're going to jump into. So is it question, because iron is always one of the biggest questions that, you know, women have to deal with as they start to get pregnant. So is it better to get your iron from plants or animal products? Okay. This is an excellent question. And especially after what we were talking about before with heavy metals and, and, right. and the brain, because there are two types of iron. There is heme iron, which is found in animal products. And there is non-heme iron, which is found in plants. Heme iron is extremely well absorbed, too well absorbed, because your body cannot really modulate the absorption. Usually with, with most nutrients, for example, calcium, okay, with calcium is a good example. If you are low in calcium, you will absorb more from your food. If you have high levels, you'll excrete more in your urine. So calcium is sort of kept in this balance unless you're very deficient. But heme iron cannot be modulated in that way. If you're eating a lot of animal products, you know, things that are very high in iron, like liver and organ meats and things like that, you will absorb way too much. And the problem with heme iron is that it is basically toxic. It's, it causes oxidative stress. It's, it damages cell membranes. It damages lipids. It causes the free radicals. It damages your DNA. It actually can get extra, extra iron gets stored in the brain where it's involved with causing those neurofibrillary tangles and the plaques that are associated with Alzheimer's. So high iron levels are actually associated with, with, um, with, degenerative neurologic diseases like Alzheimer's. And this does not happen when you eat iron from plant sources. Now it's true that iron from plant sources, you know, uh, maybe not quite as digestible and you might have to have a little, you have to watch how much you're getting. You need to get more from plants. You can't just sort of, you know, say, well, I'll have some beans once a day. And you, you can, you kind of have to follow Dr. Gregor Staley does not I mean, he's, he play, he, he does it, he does it very, very well. You know, if you have a cup and a half of legumes and a cup and a half of whole grains and, you know, your leafy greens and your cruciferous vegetables, you're going to get enough of these, you're going to get enough of these nutrients. So for iron, I would definitely get iron from plant sources. What will increase your iron absorption? Having it with a source of ascorbic acid or vitamin C. So yeah. vitamin C, so this is, and it makes perfect sense, right? So when you're having your iron rich uh, spinach, you want to have it 
with a little squeeze of lemon juice, or you want to have your legumes with some salsa, some tomato sauce, right? Or you can put tomato sauce on your, but th those are those kinds of things that, you know, they come, they come naturally, right? I mean, who doesn't get a, a spinach salad and put some lemon on it, right? But it just makes sense. Uh, you, you don't know how these things develop, but it kind of makes sense that people realize that they would get more iron from it if they ate it in that way. So you want to eat your iron rich food with a source of vitamin C. Popeye, yeah. Popeye missed that, you know, when he was eating his can of spinach, you know, to squeeze that lemon on, on his. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. But the other thing about, about um, pregnancy and iron is that as your blood volume increases by 20% during your pregnancy, your hemoglobin, the amount of, you know, the red blood cells, that they don't increase, right? So you'll get this, they call it a dilutional anemia, where later on in the second or third trimester, you'll, you'll get your, your, your hemoglobin checked and hematocrit, and your hematocrit will drop a little bit. And so we want to make sure that you get enough iron during your pregnancy so that you don't go into labor and delivery already anemic because there's going to be some blood loss and there may be more blood loss than, than we want, um, but you want to be prepared and you don't want to come out being too anemic. So that, that's something that's going to be checked during your pregnancy and it's something that we're going to try to fix during your pregnancy to make sure that you, that you have a good stores. And you'll notice that actually... Iron is stored in the, in the body as something called ferritin. And vegans have lower ferritin levels than non-vegans. And if a vegan gets her blood checked, I mean, don't worry if the doctor says, well, your ferritin's low, you need more iron. Because you don't. <laughs> you don't. I mean, you know, we don't remember, you don't really need to store extra iron, okay? So your ferritin levels might be a little bit lower than, some, than a meat eater, but it's okay. And that's, that's normal for vegans. So it's the same with white blood cells. You know, you might have a little lower white blood cells, but you don't need, because you don't have that much inflammation. You don't need the white blood cells that, that, a, that a meat eater might have. So that's something else, right? You're nodding your head in agreement because we know this is true. And so it's good to have a plant-based doctor or at least a, a doctor who is willing to think about how things could be different for someone who's plant-based. Uh, but the uh, levels for, of iron in your blood or the amount of iron that you need or the amount of, the amount of hemoglobin that you need is not different you need, you, 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 we don't want you to be anemic. It's not normal to be anemic just because you're vegan. Okay. So that's about nutritional adequacy and really excellence. And that's what we're shooting for. So in our program, the pregnancy advantage, we focus a lot on what to do to get ready before you conceive. Then when you're ready to conceive, you know, and you're ready for shields down. Okay, let's go you know, we talk about what to do when you're ready. And then also if you're having trouble conceiving, we talk about all the factors that are going to have an impact on your body that hopefully you can fix before that you want to begin conceiving, you know, but if you're, you know, trying right now to begin conceiving, hopefully we can address right. some of those issues that you're having and do this before you go down that, what I call the in vitro fertilization tunnel. Because once you start going down that, oh my gosh, I mean, first of all, you're going to be spending a phenomenal amount of money. And a lot of that is not covered by insurance. And then they're going to be coming up with things like, hey, let's, why don't you add this on? And we're not really sure that that's going to help, but why not try that? When you're in a very emotional state because, you know, having a baby, I mean, and when you can't conceive, oh my God, you're so devastated. I mean, and I know I've, I've been there, done that, you know, along the way. And I wish I had known, I mean, I think this is another reason why I'm doing this is because I wish I had known this information when I was get, trying to get pregnant or learning about it. I wish I had this program because we put everything together for you so that you understand what to do before you want to conceive and lower the shield and, and then what you want to do once you're ready to or if you're having troubles. And when we talk about that, but then we also talk about how to change the food going in because that, oh my God, your health is going to create and change or focus on what you're doing for your baby. So we want your body in the best possible shape period before you go into to, to pregnancy because they don't call it labor for nothing. Okay. And that is a huge thing that when you get going through this, the pregnancy itself, and I've given birth to two, two children and uh, yeah, I know what, yeah, that's some, some, yeah, that's just probably the biggest in terms of labor that you're going to ever go, go through. So you want to make sure your body's ready for this. And 
make sure that you are going to be giving the best possible advantage to your child. So we take you through what we call replace, inform, reform, transform, so that we can walk you through to get your nutrition to optimal levels before you get to conceive. And we can help get the toxins out of you before you conceive. But if you're having trouble conceiving, then we can help you too. So do take a minute and go to uh, pregnantready.net or pregnantready.com. And we've got for the three top things on there that we feel that you need to address to help your body get pregnant ready. So any other words to add there, Dr. Shapiro? Yes. Well, that was wonderful. You know, I haven't had children, but I brought a lot of life into the world, which is, which has, has always just warmed my heart and made me feel amazing. And it was such an honor to be with women as they do that. I mean, I was, I was just in awe always like, gosh you know how how can how can a woman endure that and then bring bring life into the world in this way it's 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 incredible to watch and from the moment i did my first delivery i knew i was hooked that there was no other life for me but i actually have, have to say that i think because i that part of why i'm doing this is is actually to make amends because i didn't know half of this i didn't know 80 percent of this um, I didn't learn in medical school, didn't learn in residency, and I wasn't able to pass this information on to my patients. And, and, it, and now I, I feel like we can't, we can't not know. It's, it's almost like when you, when you finally realize that you have to be vegan because cruelty is just too much. And, and once you've seen it and you know it, you can't not know it. You can't go back and just say, ooh, vegan. You know, you just can't. So I feel like that's the way, I, that's the way it is now about when I think about women who are you know, morbidly obese with, with, um, with pre-diabetes and some high, mild hypertension. And, you know, they just want to have a baby. I want to have a baby now. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying, well, just slow down. I mean, I know that age is an issue, but slow down because you're not, gonna, you're not going to be able to give your child and even your grandchildren through epigenetics that we know about now the best, the best start. And, and the right. world is complicated now. And they need to have, they need to have all their marbles. Everyone needs to be as as smart and as healthy as possible, and so I I feel like I'm actually having to I'm making amends with this program. Well, I mean that and things like, for example, autism. Okay, I, I growing up, I'm 60 years old. I just turned 60. I never saw an autistic child. Okay, once. Okay, growing up, it wasn't until the 1990s that I actually first saw my autistic child. That, that I had encountered in education. And now the CDC recognizes one out of 68 children will be autistic. And I've heard some other stats that are very disturbing that it's gonna be a huge increase more. So on one end of the spectrum, we've got children. And why, why is this increase in autism? Why? And I can only turn to, I mean, it's not just autism, it's so many other health issues that we're seeing in children. I mean, just in, when I stepped out of the classroom, you know, not too long ago, I, you know, in my, my four sections that I was teaching, I had children that were not children, but teenagers, because I taught high school, but teenagers that were dealing with major health issues. Mm. And mm. out of it, this should be your healthiest time. This should be the time of your life that, that you're not dealing, that you're healthy, that you're, you know, functioning at your best, your sharpest. But I would see kids and their parents would take, be taking them to doctor after doctor after doctor trying to figure out what the health issue was. And I, you know, literally, I mean, I, and I knew in my heart, it's, it's the, the food. food, it's the food, it's the toxins you're being exposed to, you know, and, and I, so that's another reason why I do this is because we're starting to see this and, and more and more children are being exposed. And so that's why I think you and I teamed up because we want to make sure that we can help help influence the next generation and we want it to be as healthy as it can be so absolutely, absolutely. we will be back next thursday so if you have questions you can yeah. tag deborah or myself on the pregnancy advantage homepage, or you can message us and then we'll research your questions ahead of time and then come out with an answer for you so if you have questions please we'd love to hear from you we're going to be back every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 9 o'clock, 9 in the morning at the Pacific Standard Time and wherever else you are in the world, whatever time zone you're in, you'll have to figure it out. 
I, I, all I can do is keep up with Deborah and myself. So we'll be back next Thursday at 12 Eastern Standard Time, 9 o'clock Central or 9 o'clock Pacific in the morning. And so give our page a like and, you know, do please the Pregnancy Advantage. We post almost every day something about how to get your body pregnant ready. So we have a lot of tips and tricks for you, not tricks, but <laughs> tips on help, helping to change your health destiny so that you can change that of your child. So. And can people already sign up for the Pregnancy Advantage, the programs? Oh, absolutely, Deborah. Thank you for a good reminder. <laughs> we are. We're live. Our program is ready. Dr. Shapiro and I have been working on this for over a year. And, you know, talk about labor. We, we were in labor for nine months. <laughs> And you know the water's broke, we are fully dilated, and we gave birth to the Pregnancy Advantage. So I'm so excited because this is just an absolutely incredible program to help educate you. We put it all together in one place, one package. So you, we've got two programs. One is self-learn, self-paced. You go through it on your own. And then we have the signature coaching program. So we are open, we, are, we wanna help women. So love to have you join us. Read more about it on www.pregnancyadvantage.net. Excellent. And we'll see you next week. Put comments below. How did you like it today? All right. All right. Do better. All right. Thank How you. can we do better? It's part from mastering the technology. We'll get better. I promise. All right. Thanks, Everybody Jim. have a great day. Take and care. We'll Eat healthy. Week. Eat healthy. <laughs>